What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Today I'm gonna to be talking about nutrition on the trail. It is super important to have proper nutrition to keep you fueled for your adventure. And if you are new to hiking or backpacking, well, I've got some things to illuminate this all for you. Let's break it down, starting now. Before we do go any further, I do wanna give a shout out and a thank you to Mystery Ranch. Mystery Ranch, as you've heard it before from me, is the sponsor of this channel. I have loved them for a long time and I am proud to work with them because they make amazing backpacks. So if you are looking for a hiking backpack or a overnight multi-day backpack, make sure that you check out mysteryranch.com because they have some amazing packs. And my favorite is the Bridger and I've said it a million times on this channel, but if you're unfamiliar with it, it's the best backpack on the market, in my humble opinion. First things first, it's obviously important to keep your nutrition up on the trail. There is a real thing that happens when people do not bring enough food and it's called bonking. And it is very uncomfortable, it is not fun at all, and it can be serious. So today I wanna to tackle this issue because I don't want you to have what happened to me. I had a pretty serious incident a couple years ago where I went out for a day hike where I massively underestimated, misjudged uh, my distance, the conditions, and I didn't bring food with me. This was a ding dong move on my part and compounded the fact that it was in the summertime, it was hot and I sweated a lot. So what happened was my body became very imbalanced. I wasn't replacing what I was losing, especially my electrolytes and my salts. I became imbalanced and I developed what is known as hyponatremia, which is where the body is working hard, you're drinking tons of water, and then your body's shedding salts and electrolytes and you're not replacing them in the form of snacks, meats, trail bars, whatever you might have with you, your body becomes dangerously imbalanced. And for my experience, it was scary. I started getting delirious. I was having trouble focusing. I actually was having trouble navigating and getting out of this canyon where I was. I literally had to turn to my dog Kovu and say, Kovu, you need to lead this, take me home. And he just did an amazing job of figuring out where to go for 30 yards, waiting for me to catch up and literally navigated me all the way back to my car. I then sat at my car for the next 45 minutes, laying on the ground, eating all the food that I could before I could even move or drive or do anything else. Let's not let that happen to you. So obviously dinners and meals are pretty easy, I think, to have a baseline good experience. So what do you do in between breakfast and dinner? Well, that is kind of the conundrum for most hikers out there. I have found a few things that I really like. So obviously tried and true is just a bag of trail mix. What I like to do is buy big tubs of mountain mix from Safeway, and it's kind of been my go-to. It's about 10 bucks for a pretty bulk canister, and then I just transfer them into Ziplocs, and that's what I hike with. I really like the taste, it's got real M&Ms in them, and they're just really good. Of course, Kind Bars, Trail Bars, Pro Bars, Scratch Energy Chews, all of those things are amazing. But I wanna talk about things to watch out for, misconceptions. It is very important to not just have things like fruit, even though I love dehydrated fruit, it is one of my go-to trail snacks. Honestly, one of my favorites is getting a package of apricots and a package of mangoes, and I just flip-flop half of the packages of each, mix them up, and you have the best mangoes and apricots ever because they cross-pollinate and they're so, so good. But one of the dangers that comes along with fruit is that it's basically just packaged up sugar. So while you may get a little burst of energy, it's not really what your body is truly craving and needs. And it is a short-term fix. It is a good fix to just keep snacking, keep having those little sugar bombs that you pluck away, but it's really important to have other things. So proteins and fats are really where it's at for when you're on the trail. Now, if you are a meat eater such as myself, what I really like to do is to have some sort of salami or I'll go get a package of pepperonis and I'll throw those into a Ziploc bag and I love being able to eat little slices, just take my knife and just slice off little bits of meat on the trail. So what that is doing is it's keeping me with salty, fatty food, which on the trail 
is gold. That's one of the best things that you can feed yourself for really going long distances, having that energy that isn't just these short-term spikes and giving you food for the trail. With the meats and salty snacks, that is going to be super important. It gives you that long duration type of energy and nutrition for the trail. What happens if you aren't a meat eater? Well, it's definitely tougher, I'm not gonna lie. If you don't eat meat on the trail or just you're just not a meat eater, then it's a lot harder to get those high fatty proteins, but it's not impossible. So almonds, cashews, things like that are a truly great source of fats of salty fats, and that is a great thing to supplement if you're not gonna eat pepperonis, meats, beef jerkies, anything like that. There are some options for you on the market, such as monk packs, or these are gluten-free, plant-based options, and they're honestly pretty good. I don't love them. There are, to me, better options on the market, but if you are a vegetarian, or you're not interested in those meat types of options, that is a good option. Some of my other things that are a little less obvious that I do like to do, I like to bring cheese, I like to bring tortillas, I like to sometimes bring little packets of hummus. I love peanut butter. Peanut butter to me is my favorite way to get any sort of protein, uh, fat, calories, and it's honestly, I just took a spoonful of peanut butter before filming this video. Now, sometimes if I'm going on a long trail, I will pack a whole jar of peanut butter. Now, most backpackers do not endorse that. I just love peanut butter that much, and so that's what I do. One of my other all-time favorites is wasabi almonds from Blue Diamond. Those are incredible, and they really hit the spot. And another favorite guilty pleasure of mine is honey mustard pretzels, the Snyder's honey mustard pretzels. My favorite treat, absolutely, hands down, is peanut butter M&Ms. I just snack on those things all day long on the trail. They're dessert at night before I go to bed. And those are just like the perfect combination of fat, sugar, deliciousness, just all packaged up into a delightful eating experience. Definitely, that's like my food list. And if you're interested, I will have kind of like a food list in the video below. So if you just wanna look at all the things that I like to eat, well, check out the description and that will help give you something you can maybe copy and paste into another document or something like that. Also on the day, you might notice these lovely books I have arranged here because I do wanna talk about some alternative options. And there are people out there who've gone to great lengths to make sure that your food is a positive experience on the trail. You may have seen me work with Chef Corso before and he makes these little trail books uh, that are honestly pretty cool. They're great and they give, the main thing is, is that I love the ideas that come from these types of books. It's really easy to get locked in to a paradigm and you just get the same thing over and over and over again and your food experience is the same, it's monotonous, and it's uninteresting. Well, uh, Chef Corso really tries to break you out of that, so make sure you check out his, he's got a bunch of different editions. I have a couple of them and they are great, so I really recommend that. And also, one of my dear friends, Morgan Shogren, is an author, writer, and kind of adventure bum. She is the running bum on Instagram, and she's wrote a book called Outlandish, which is all of her amazing meals and stories that accompany her meals. So if you're looking for inspiration for your adventures and inspiration for your food, I definitely recommend checking out Outlandish by Morgan Shogren. And something that just arrived in the mail a few days ago, and I've been super impressed with it, is Cook It Wild by Chris Nuttall Smith. So this is a little bit less of a backpacker option, but great if you are just looking for interesting meals at home that you can also cook while camping or even on some adventures and trail hikes out there. Look at that. It's gorgeously done and it gives you some great inspiration for things that you can really take on your adventures. Most of the stuff is you prepare it at home and then you take it out somewhere and eat it in the wild. So I like the concept, so shout out to those authors who are doing amazing work to keep us inspired and keep us eating well. If you are gonna be hiking for 
you know, two to four miles, then nutrition is obviously still important, but it isn't as big of a deal. However, if you are hiking five or more miles, if you are backpacking, if you are really trying to get out there, then this is super, super important to understand these concepts. And if you're new to hiking, you're new to backpacking, well, keeping the food situation dialed in is one of the best skills that you can have to have a great time and to go farther. I would love to hear from you now. So if you have trail food ideas, things that I missed, or just your personal favorite, I would love to hear from you. So hit me up in those comments below and uh, let's keep it uh, tasty out there, folks. That's it from me. This is my trail food video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. See you later.